So if you started to notice a lot more datchas on the road, especially the datcha duster, which is what this video is about, you might ask yourself the question, when you start looking online and stuff, why are they so cheap? And I think that's the wrong question. I think the question should be, why are other cars so bloody expensive? When I go for a drive, I'm going to tell you all about my two-day ownership of this Dasta. So we've got our coffee. We're here in East Molesey. It's 8.15 on a bank holiday May Day weekend, Monday, week before the coronation. King Charles. So we're going to head over, talking of royalty. Here we are, approaching Hampton Court Palace, which I live literally two miles down the road in Walton on Thames. And you're probably thinking, why has this guy bought a Dacia Duster? Well, a lot of it is price point, I've got to say. And I was dubious when I started looking at them. I was a bit dubious as to what, what the build quality was going to be like. Despite looking at loads and loads of videos uh, on YouTube, um, I thought, you know what, I'll go and do a bit of research, have a look at them, see what they're like. And I was extremely surprised, I've got to say, in a good way. So we're heading to Bushy Park now, where I'm going to pull up and give you a bit more of an in-depth uh, sort of summary of just owning this car for, for one weekend and uh, my thoughts on it so far. So here we are in glorious Bushy Park, just outside Hampton Court. This was Henry VIII's uh, hunting ground, one of his many gardens where he kept all his deer and uh, his playground basically, after he stole it off Cardinal Wolsey. So yeah, um, I'm going to pull up at the car park in a second, but just... Uh, just to sort of go back on what I just said about why did I buy one of these. Well, I've just swapped this basically, which is in the thumbnail. Uh, I've swapped this for, uh, not swapped, uh, traded this uh, in for um, my VW Caddy van, which was a 2005 model. And uh, I wouldn't say it was coming to the end of its life by any means. It had only done 120,000 miles, but it was, you know, it was coming up for 20 years old. And, um, you know, month on month, there was something going wrong with it. and. Uh, it just got to the point where I thought, you know what, I need to sort of dive into something new now. And uh, how are we going to do this? And I sort of was looking around and noticed that, as we all have, the cars are getting bigger and bigger. You know, some of them are ridiculous, really, for what they are. Um, and I thought, if I could get a nice mi sort of mini, small to medium size uh, SUV, that might, might sort of tickle the boxes. Because the VW Caddy van wasn't exactly no enormous. Um, it had the height, but it wasn't particularly long or anything like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and find a corner in this car park at Bushy Park because <laughs> this sort of links into what this vehicle is going to be all about. Um, and I'm just going to show you how I think it's going to work as a leisure vehicle, a day-to-day -day A to B vehicle and more importantly the reason I bought it as a works vehicle. So we're just going to pull over now, you can see Bushy Park in the background now, we're going to pull over and find a quiet corner I hope and do a little um, sort of... paid for this vehicle just to sort of stamp home what good value it is. I bought it from SMC uh, Motor Group in Weybridge. They've got about four or five branches. They've got one in Farnborough or somewhere like that. And they say I live down the road from Weybridge. So I bought this. Very easy sort of uh, deal. And uh, the guys were great there. I spoke to a guy called Martin. It's fantastic. Anyway, this here has got to do the lot. We opened the huge boot. And we're not going to do litres, and when I get back to the yard, I'm going to get the tape measure out and give you some proper measurements, which I think is more useful than just... Well, litres are great for comparison, aren't they, for other models and stuff. But um, basically, when you fold these seats down, you get about 1,650 litres, something like that. And uh, again, I'll give you all the measurements later on of what, that's, what that really means in day-to-day -day sort of moving stuff around. But um, I'm a furniture maker, so we have to get all flat pack furniture in here. We make it all flat pack so it goes through people's front, the front doors. And obviously this seat's got the quick release 
lever here, which is great for folding that backwards and forwards. And again, all the sizes will come up of that later. I actually added these side steps on a great expense. They were 600 quid, but they are the proper Dacia ones. And they're all tailor made to fit properly and they've got the strengthening bars. And crucially, they've got little slots for your feet to get on. So you can hold up on the bars and we can do the lassoing and tie everything up. They're, they are there for a little bit of vanity, and but mostly practicality. Um, this is the Prestige model, and it comes with just about everything you need, really, day to day. It's got a diamond cut alloy wheels, which I wasn't overly fussed about, but it come with them, which is great. So this is a 2019 model. It's just been superseded again. This is a Series 2. It's actually a Series 3 out now, and that is the game changer, the Series 3, because you open that, and it's just, like, it's just coming under 20 grand. And uh, you, you get one of them and then compare it to the sort of so-called, uh, you know, higher class models, the Audis and the VWs and that, and they ain't far behind for half the price. So uh, if we come around here, you've got plenty of ground clearance still, even with the steps on. There's loads of ground clearance. We've got the LED running lights on this model. Nice little detail at the front there, sort of rubbing strip underneath there for clearance. So on this, this one here, the Series 2, you get a daytime running lights. The first series was a bit crude, so I'm glad I haven't bought that. We've got chunky bars, and I've gone for the 1500 mil roof bars on top. So let's hop in the back and have a little look. Oh. So, the headrest is off, because I've been filming back and front windows and all sorts. So let's just see what you get, right? I'm gonna say I'm gonna disclose the price towards the end. So we've got an infotainment screen there. It's all set up for Apple CarPlay and Android, so it's, it's, it's up to date. Those dials down there, they're just like the Audi ones and the piano keys above. So you'll notice they've kept it quite clutter free there because the actual um, information is within the button, like where the direction of the airflow is going, the temperature of it, the speed and everything. That's a great idea. This has got aircom. Uh, there is a weird thing that a lot of people pick up on there. <coughs> That's the dial for the 4x4 model, not for putting your dips in. If you've got you know some chips, you don't put your dip in there. Although it's the perfect size. <coughs> Only one uh, cup holder there which is really odd I don't know if there's one in the glove compartment I don't think so but it's odd there's not side by side there's just a flat shelf next to the coffee thing there seems to be a big thing in reviews about coffee cup holders but there are two here okay um, I think they vary from model to model what you're going to get but this is the prestige as I said so you get like electric windows all around and stuff which is the least you expect these days didn't you but um so I've sort of had a poke around and I'm sort of getting a feel for the quality of it and generally it's very good this has had Baby seats in the backs because the isofix points. Oh, hold on, the camera's gone a bit mad. Actually, before we go on to them, look, this is what I'm talking about. This is this this is what this probably happens on all cars. Kids have been in here kicking their boots around and stuff and putting iPads or whatever in there. So it's torn them off on both of them. They're both a weak spot. They're just something to look if you are buying a, a used one. This is only three years old and they've gone already. But I, I know a few people <laughs> that can uh, repair that, so I'm not worried about that. That's just a quick fix, that, both sides. So we'll, we'll strengthen that up with some uh, thicker cotton. That'll be all right. And then you've got round to the back here, you've got that weird, stupid um, seat belt there for the middle seat. And the good thing about those, it's quite a low transmission tunnel here, so you can get three across the back here easily. Um, big double parcel shelf there. And I say, thankfully, on this model, split seat, the base model doesn't have that as one big bench seat that folds down, which is, isn't is great. Because, again, that leads me on to this being a works vehicle. My uh, assistant can sit in this back single seat where I am. I can fold the double seat back, fold that forward, and we can get about eight foot of timber in there. So it doubles up as uh, an all-rounder. Anyway, it's enough waffle of the inside for the moment. Um, we're going to go back outside. So as we uh, begin to exit Bushy Park now, get back out into the the mayhem um, another reason why the uh, VW Caddy had to go was bloody Euless so it's coming right up to Hampton Court Bridge here so I'm in it now in Bushy Park I'm right in it there are five councils ch uh, challenging it but I don't know if they're gonna win I mean it, it'll be a game changer if they do because it will save a lot of people an awful lot of hassle getting rid of perfectly good cars um, but it is a fact that um, it looks like it's going to happen. So um, we're now just over to the left there. That's, that's Hampton Court Palace. So we're in the Euless zone now. So I come over here to see friends. We go to Bushy Park. Um, and I've got suppliers over here for materials and stuff. I go to various uh, hardware places that I need to, to use. Sorry, it's a bit wobbly. I'm on some mount here, so it's a bit dodgy. Um, and it's just all these factors, you know, 
I didn't want to get rid of the caddy van, but it needed to go. It was just another thing. Um, yeah, you can charge the customers £12.50 each day you're on site, but I go over there for more than just work. So uh, uh, here we go. Right. So we're just about to pass Hampton Court Palace. You'll see, hopefully, you'll see a little red telephone box there and the gates. So here we are. And right now, we've just exited the Euler zone. Just as we enter the bridge now, we're just going over the Thames now. And now we're not in Euler's, but it's so close to my front door that it, it was a, a big fact. It's like blotting paper, isn't it? It's spread out and out and out and out. I wonder where it'll end. Will it be all M25 one day? I don't know. But um, yeah, it just uh, sort of pushed me to make my decision a bit earlier than I wanted to, really, to be honest. But um, we're just going to head round here and head back along the Thames and someone's parked a lorry right on the corner, excellent. So where was we after a lorry parked on a blind corner? That was a great bit of driving. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the ULES thing, it looks like it's happening and uh, yeah, it, it did help me make my decision. So let's just ignore that for a minute and get on with what we've bought here. So it's a 1.6 petrol engine. Um, diesels are okay, I think, if you're powering up and down the motorway and you want to shave some uh, MPG, you know. Um, but this is like, I work so locally around here that I thought this would be perfect. I wanted something with a bit of grunt because we do go up and down the motorway now and again. And uh, I've listened to all the reviews and stuff and I think some of these uh, sort of motoring journalists, they drive a lot of cars and they're comparing it to like really powerful stuff and uh, punchier engines. But I'll tell you what, for bop just bopping about and doing school runs and putting a dog in the back and what I'm going to use it for as a trades vehicle, it's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, Six, uh, five speed uh, manual gearbox on this one. You can get the diesel as well, but I wasn't expecting that to be very refined to be in a, a Dacia, to be honest. I know a lot of this is all Renault gear in the back of here. Stuff that they don't use anymore gets put into these and probably enhanced a bit. But um, yeah, the underpinnings of it are quite old. I think there's a bit of a Clio in here as well somewhere. Um, but I tell you what, it rides lovely. I'm not really getting what they say about wallowing around the bends. I, I'm not picking that up myself. Um, it's got quite big tyres on it, got 17 inch uh, alloys. And I tell you what, it irons out all the crappy potholes we've got here in Surrey. They are, the sh roads are shocking, probably not the same as where you are. But I'm just going over, this is absolutely lovely. It's such a smooth ride. And a lot of cars these days, are, they're, they're tight. You know, they're really sort of, the suspension, everything's really tight on them. They're not overly comfortable. We've got an Audi A1, and that's set up like a bloody racing car. Here we go, more bumps now. So, um, I find it an absolute pleasure to drive. It's not too complicated, and I think that a lot of new cars are bloody dangerous. They've got you, you know, you're not allowed to touch your phone and play with your phone in the car, like actually physically hold it anymore. Um, this is all done off of a Bluetooth thing. I can just tell it to stop when I want. Um, but some of these new cars with these big infotainment screens and stuff, they're distracting. They're dangerous, in my opinion. I don't know how they're getting away with it, to be honest. And there's so much tech in there. Menus, within menus, within menus. Bloody dangerous. This is simple, it's got no lane correct or anything like that. It's got cameras all round, which I haven't actually showed you yet. I'll show you when I get back in the yard. Um, but it's got cameras all round the vehicle again for you know what I paid for it, which we'll get onto in a minute. It might help you make your decision. You know, you could get two of these for a prestige car <laughs> or a mid-range car, you know. So uh, yeah, I, I think it's a lovely driver. So I've only had it two days. Um, there's little areas here and there where it sort of shows its sort of budget a little bit, but nothing that's going to put you off, in my opinion. To say all these piano keys down here that I've got, they're, they're like off the Audi. Um, got rev counter, speedo, all, all the, got a little menu box in the middle of the, the dials here, just for the basic how much range you've got left on petrol and stuff, things like that. Just the basics. But to say this is the prestige model, so it's worth looking at the four different levels, but they have just changed them for 2023. Um, they're, they're, they're named differently, giving you similar specs. They've got four by four. The colours are different now. There's a couple. Of, there's like a khaki colour. Um, white wouldn't have been my natural choice. I would have probably had a darker, more rugged colour. But I wanted the spec as well, like the aircon and everything. I just wanted everything. I wanted all the toys because at the end of the day, it is a commercial vehicle, so the colour isn't important. And I do pull up uh, outside some very nice houses, and uh, I've got a lovely bunch of clients. And it's nice to have something a bit decent. You know, I'm sort of approaching my mid fifties now, and it's nice to have something that's half decent, a bit of comfort. And the old vans, they're a bit hard work now, the old diesel vans. The new vans are okay, but that's another reason why I bought this. This has got 30, nearly, nearly 32,000 on the clock, and it's um, the 2019 model. To get a van in this, you're looking north for 20 grand. You know, something of this size, you know, like a Connect or whatever it is. Um, or part, Peugeot Partner. And, you know, you can't put anyone in the back. It's just the van, obviously. That's fine if you're trade, you trade. But for what I'm using it for... Um, 
we're only on site now and again. We're basically workshop based, we're not site chippers as such, we're actually bespoke furniture makers. Um, so uh, predominantly we're in the workshop and then the rest of the time it has to be a normal vehicle, you know, going out and going into bloody Eulers. Um, so this is a van for only a little portion of the time and we'll make it work with the roof bars. Right, we're heading nearly back, we're coming back through Molesey now, uh, approaching Morton on Thames, my, where I live and uh, we're going to get the tape measure out and give you some dimensions if you are looking to sort of use this as a sort of you know a bit of a roughy tufty vehicle and you know maybe you're into antiques or something and you go to car boot fairs and you go what can i get actually get in it what do bloody liters mean i don't know what they mean so i'm going to give you some sizes because there is one video out there that i found that show you any sizes of how this vehicle can be used catch you in a minute so i say i can't find a single video with the dimensions of this vehicle which might come in handy for you so the tape measures out so I'll put up some graphics as well. There's no wind today, so the sound should be okay. But as I move down the vehicle, you'll probably lose my voice, which isn't a bad thing. So I'll give you the measurements and then I'll put them up on the screen at the same time. So to get in the vehicle, the most you're going to get in is 98 centimetres, so 980 millimetres. Height wise, 75, 750 millimetres. Got a little lip here. So from the back of the seat, 94, so 940 millimetres. In here, 90 centimetres high. So if you're thinking of dog guards or whatever, 90 centimetres, so 900 millimetres. Across the shoulders inside, one metre, 1,000 millimetres. You might lose my voice here because we're going to drop these seats. So unfortunately it's not a flat bed, but you could potentially put a headrest a bit further forward and that will make it drop a bit more. So here we go. And then that's in my driving position, I'm five foot nine, so that's just fairly average driving position. We've now got a whopping 170 centimetres, so it's 1700 millimetres all the way to the back of the seats. So now we're going to put that drive passenger seat further forward. So this is where it comes in for long panel work. Wardrobe size, you know, uh, decor panels and things like that. Two metres for 2,000 millimetres and how wide where that armrest is. Sixty-six centimetres, six hundred and sixty millimetres from that armrest to the side of the car, so you get a big panel in there. And here's the trick. Just chucking it there and we need to get wardrobes to sight. Two metres goes in there, you know, that's fine. And then we work, mate. Sitting in that seat there, was in the van, he had to follow in his, uh, his van as well as we had two vans going to site, and we haven't even got into the roof bars yet. So I think that's going to cover most of what we need. How much have we got across here? Yeah, 66 centimetres, 660 millimetres. That's going to more than cover our needs. I hope those dimensions have helped you if you're looking to buy one of these and you're thinking, what can I actually get in it? There you go. So when I was saying this has to do everything, work and all our le leisure stuff as well and going out for weekends, we're going boating today on the Thames. We live literally 300 yards from the Thames, something like that. So we've got a new um, battery operated outboard called E-Propulsion. If you're into boating, this is the one to have. This is uh, by far the leader in the market at the moment. Gives you about five, six hours. Anyway, look, loads of room still in there. Loads and loads and loads of room. But that's us today. Let's go out. No, it hasn't broken down already. We're having a full final walk around. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been of some use to you. If you're thinking about that, you've seen them out on the road, you think, you know what, I might have a look into them. I would. Um, but just check them all over. And uh, there are four current uh, levels of uh, trim. I so said they've just bought one out for 23. And that's just under 20 grand, I believe, with all the bells and whistles. Um, so how much did I pay for this? Have you been guessing on the way through the video? Three years of age. Full service, obviously, just been carried out. Um, and one owner before me, that's it. 
you get all that for £12,200 and I don't think that's too bad. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'm trying to get up to those thousand uh, uh, subscriptions. Uh, it would be great to do that. We're a little way off still, but hopefully a bit more content this summer. We're going to get there. Cheers and thanks for watching. Like and